Alright, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox and I'm back with another UV mapping tutorial. This week I have five great quick tips on tools you can use inside of your UV mapping workflow to speed everything up. These are things that are kind of overlooked potentially um, and I just want to show you what they do and how great they are to have inside of Cinema 4D. So if you're interested in those five quick tips, let's hop right in. Okay, so you can see I have a fully UV mapped 3D burger model here. All of our 3D models uh, come UV mapped. This is from our food pack. It's the burger model if you're interested in that. But I want to show you on the left hand side, I have my UV islands here. Um, and a lot of times when you're at this stage, maybe you want to move things around. You want to kind of select individual pieces and parts. And it's kind of frustrating, you know, if I have my selection tool, you don't want to have to do this. Uh, if I'm using kind of my lasso selection tool, I can kind of draw around things, but I'm going to select a lot of pieces and parts. So a really quick tool tip for this is using something in the select menu called fill selection. This is similar to a loop selection, but it fill selects everything between cuts on a model. And by cuts, I mean edge loops you've placed around your model. So all of these edges of these UV islands, I created using edge loop cuts for the UV map. So if I hit UF, that is the same as going up to the select menu and saying fill selection. And now you can see all of my UV islands are easy to highlight because it is filling that whole selection. So this is really easy. Now I can just grab one, move it around, hit UF again, grab another one, move it around. This is just super handy when you're dealing with a lot of UV islands. So that is tip number one. So my second tip I'll show you on this same burger model. A lot of times you're going to want to kind of reorient um, your UV islands. So let's say I, you know, grab my fill selection and I really want this kind of center line of this cheese <laughs> piece for some reason to be um, kind of aligned in world space up and down. So I can obviously take it and rotate it and try and eyeball the center piece. But an easier way to fix this is if I go to my cheese, you have to select the actual UV map for this, not like everything at once. If I select that cheese piece, I go to my edge selection, I select one of the edges. The second I do that, you'll see this option, a line UV island shows up. So if I select that, it immediately snaps it and aligns it to that center point of that line that you've chosen. So this is super handy, especially if you have like really tall rectangular pieces that are annoying and you don't want to like perfectly rotate in 3D space. So that is tip number two. Okay, for tip number three, I have grabbed a new model from our city pack, this fire hydrant model. All of our uh, models come UV map, but I've kind of blown them apart here so we can start from scratch. If you are unwrapping something for a UV map, a lot of times what you're going to do is take a piece or part. Let's say I take this, I'm just going to solo it out. I'm going to take this body piece. And I've already taken a couple loop selections here. Um, but obviously with UV mapping, you're trying to unwrap something and flatten it down as best as possible. So here I've taken some loop selections by hitting UL and that works really great. A lot of the times, you know, I can select this one, I can select this one, etc. But when I need the seam on this object, if I use a loop selection, it's going to cut through the whole top. It's not going to end where I want it to. And so the only uh, route is basically to go up here and kind of hold shift and like slowly select these, especially if it's kind of a complex unwrap. Uh, but what is easier than that, again, this is like a really quick tip inside of Cinema 4D, is if I just start the selection, so I select this one, and then I go all the way down here to where I want it to end. If I hit shift and control and click, it immediately connects all of the edges in between where I selected. So that is just a super handy tip, especially when you're making all these seams and you have a really complex model. You don't want to be sitting there clicking edges over and over again. So that is tip number three. For my fourth tip, I'm using the decorative street light from our city pack. Um, this has a lot of cylindrical rectangular parts to it. So I'm going to show you a tool called UV Rectangularize. And what that does is you can see here, if I go to the pole body, 
I have unwrapped these pieces in parts, but because there's a taper on this geometry, um, it's kind of off kilter, and I don't really like that. It's almost a perfect seam. This taper of this geometry is not that far off from being a right angle, so I think this is a perfect use for this tool. So I'm going to use our newly found uh, fill selection, so UF. I'm going to grab the UV island, so this one, whoops. So this piece right here, and you can see there's a taper here. And what I'm going to do is check that UV rectangularize right here, and it immediately snaps it to a perfect rectangle without a lot of distortion, as you can see, since the geometry wasn't that distorted in the first place, but C4D kind of gets a little confused and tries to taper it perfectly. So I'm gonna do the same to this object up here. Click that, perfect. Now I'm gonna show you on this piece, if I select this piece and wanna do the same thing on it, um, I technically all of these are kind of perfect quads. So you can see lines running through the center of them. Up here though, you'll notice there's some extra geometry and cuts uh, kind of making not perfect lines through the center of these. So if I try and do that on this piece, it won't work. You know, it says it only works with one rectangular quad patch. So that is just something to keep in mind, but UV rectangularize is really uh, handy. Okay, and then the last tip I wanna show you all is I have our camper model here from our outdoor adventure pack. I have my texture on it. Um, it's looking pretty good. I already have it UV mapped, but if I go into my UV map, a really handy tool kind of towards the end of when you're UV mapping, just to double check everything, is up in here, there is something in textures. You can click empty canvas. If I click empty canvas, you'll get this attributes panel over here, which shows you different types of overlays, which is super, super handy. So there's some stuff you can mess around with here. I encourage you to do so. But there's a piece here called shading. And in here, it shows you kind of multicolored islands. So I can do multicolored islands. Um, this starts around, this starts at like 0% opacity. So everything will look like this. I select multicolored islands and then I turn this opacity up. And this is a really handy tool to kind of identify all these pieces and parts when it's getting really crazy and it reflects that on your model. Another handy one of these shading tools is if I go down to distortion and pump that all the way up, basically wherever there is red or blue, it'll show you where your UV maps are being distorted. So in this case, maybe I'm seeing the sides of the camper are really distorted. So maybe I'm gonna add a couple extra edge cuts there to fix that. So anyway, uh, I feel like that is one that is definitely hidden that I did not know about for the longest time, but is super handy when you are doing something really complex in terms of UV mapping. All right, so that is pretty much it. I just wanted to show you those five quick tips on how you can speed up your UV workflow. I have a bunch of these tips in my belt, so if you're interested in more videos like this, please let me know in the comments section below. If you would like this video and subscribe to the channel, that helps me out a ton. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, including this camper model, that's part of our outdoor adventure pack. Uh, there's a lot of cool pieces and parts to this. You can open the door, there's an inside, there's a bed. Kind of went all out on this one. Probably no one's even opened this door uh, so far. But yeah, we have a lot of great models on the happytoolbox.com. So if you're interested, check them out. All right, I'll catch you next time.